All right. So uh, we were just going over uh, one of the names that reported earnings, which is exactly the group that I want to talk about, QDEL. Um, really strong, uh, really strong numbers. And a few of these have been reporting this week, and they've had a similar result. They've all been beating earnings. So what is this name, and, and what are we going to talk about tonight, and, and why we're going to talk about it? There's there's a question that I got. You could So first of all, this is a life science equipment company. They discover, develop, manufacture, markets, diagnostic healthcare products and solutions. The company offers diagnostic solutions, which help in the, the detection and diagnosis of critical diseases and other medical conditions, including infectious women's health, uh, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so, you know, a, an interesting company. And the companies that I'm going to go over are pretty small cap in nature. So first of all, so how did I find this, right? So I'm going to talk about where there's been some, where there's been inflows, uh, you know, kind of what's going on in the healthcare space. I think the healthcare space has looked pretty ugly overall, except for some pharma names, you know, so we've done this before in, we've done this before in the trading room where we've kind of go, gone over charts, you know, we went over and uh, it was not in this last weekend's newsletter, but the week prior where I talked about, you know, uh, essentially the, the A's, uh, AbV, Abbott, AstraZeneca. Um, I think those names uh, have been showing a little bit more strength, but clearly Big Pharma and Biotech has just not looked has not looked well. Um, some of them have bounced back, but you know, if you remember from years past, and you know, even like I'm not picking on Jim Cramer, so um, I, I like Cramer, uh, but you know, his powerhouses. I think he actually called these like the Four Horsemen, um, you know, a couple of years ago, and I forget the exact names, but you know, Biogen kind of just look back. So I just wanted to make a quick point that this is not where the strength is right now in biotech and healthcare. What previously was, I mean, look at these big run-ups. Um, you know, Regeneron was another name. I mean, these things, these names have done, not, I mean, look at Regeneron. You know, it's breaking down. So again, I don't know enough about their business model, but, um, you know, why this is exactly, maybe their pipelines have, have uh, dried up or maybe there's a shift going on. But certainly, what's been going on is these, these companies are really weak. Um, the charts are really, uh, sorry, the charts are really weak looking. Um, Amgen, which I think they were just talking about on Fast Money the other night, I think is probably looks the best, even though it's kind of, you know, it's just been kind of digesting and moving sideways, I guess a little bit up to sideways. Uh, so that's Amgen. What's the, I mean, I guess we could, Gilead probably at one point was in this group. You know, Gilead looks horrible, even though it just took out a VPOC, by the way. Uh, downside VPOC. Uh, what's what's another name? What's the another name that I'm thinking of? Uh, Amgen, Biogen, uh, Regeneron. I think there's a, there's a fourth one, or there's another one that I'm thinking of that I can't remember. Um, but we could probably, oh, Celgene. Um, so Celgene is, is another one that's just gotten absolutely obliterated. So, uh, so A, they're, they're, these look ridiculously bad. The only one that I think, you know, other than playing a reversion trade, you know, I think Amgen is probably the best one, but these look disgusting. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I'm not going to go through every one of the healthcare, but, you know, and you could see this by, by looking at the, uh, by looking at the ETFs themselves. So if you look at XLV, I mean, it's, you know, fought back a little bit here to the 200 day moving average, but it still looks like it's challenged. It's below the 200 day moving average. IBB, which is large, you know, which is all the companies that I mentioned as well as healthcare, uh, there's both it's it's large biotech mostly and large uh, healthcare that are that's in IBB below the 200 day moving average not even close you know XBI is a little bit better because I think small cap biotech has been performing better that's still above but again it just doesn't look like there's a ton of ton of stuff going on in this right now and you could see as well you know when I do the the ETF fund fund flow report every week in, in the newsletter let's see if i could break let's see if i could we don't need the um 
uh, trade alert so I can expand the screen. So if you look at XLV, and you can kind of see what I'm talking about visually, but you know, if you're a regular reader of the flow report, you could see that this is what's going on with XLV. There's actually, I think, more red bars here. And I could bring up the, the, the raw numbers, but I think you, you get enough of a picture here. Just the fact that um, there's been a lot of outflows, even over the last week in the short term. You know, there's a couple inflows, but it seems that the outflows are overweighing. Um, IBB. So again, the, you know, why I track this stuff is because it's, it's real money going in and out. And same thing with IBB. It's actually been very quiet. Bunch of outflows, you know, in the beginning of the year. And it's pretty been, it's pretty much been steady, except for a couple one-offs. There's been more outflows. There's money leaving this group. Same thing with XBI, maybe a little bit better. Saw some inflows in the beginning of or some somewhere in April, but there's been a lot of outflows too. So it doesn't look like accumulation. It doesn't look like there is a lot of money that's being put to work. It seems like if 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 anything, there's there's more money being taken out. All right. So I started to look at a couple small ETFs that came up on my radar. And this is, you know, a lot of why I track those fund flows, because just like following option activity, it gives me some ideas of where people are putting their money. The other thing is, is this kind of changed years back. Back in 2007, 2008, ETFs were mostly being used as hedges, um, you know, for, you know, uh, a hedge fund who had some longs in healthcare. From time to time, they would want to hedge with IBB. Um, and basically, you know, go short the ETF versus their long individual names. Well, that's changed. You know, a lot more uh, individual investors have been using ETFs and people have been really, funds have been using them as an asset allocation model. So rather than use them for beta, you know, hedging, um, funds have been using them for alpha, um, especially in international. But in different pockets in different areas. So we've gone through a couple areas over the last couple of years that have seen some accumulation in some different places. You know, the robotics, the the robotics ETFs, the bots, the robo. You know, you go back and you kind of look at this. Um, it clearly there hasn't been much over the last six months, but if you go back and if you look at the last two years. You know, that's where the accumulation has been. Bots has been a little bit more recent. But again, the investment has, has definitely um, taken a pause. You know, bots saw this big investment. Um, I mean, look at this, you know, drove it up pretty pretty decently, big move. And since then, there's still been some inflows in here, but they've, they're not as high as they used to be. Um, believe it or not, NVIDIA is the biggest holdings and now in bots. Uh, you know, same thing in a couple of the Chinese internet ETFs, K-Web, you know, there's another theme. So this is, these are the kind of things that I look for. You know, K-Web was the best performing group in 2017, and, and it certainly saw a lot of inflows and, and accumulation uh, throughout the year. All right. So this just popped up on my screen. Uh, this, so this equipment ETF is called XHE, and it's a small ETF. You know, there's been little bits and pieces of accumulation, but it's really so, something seems a little bit different here. There seems to be some money. Maybe it's because, you know, a bunch of these names are reporting earnings and people wanted to go in, thought they might report good earnings. I don't know. I don't know the reason why, but you could definitely see that something has changed here. Um, so it's just kind of the cusp of the beginning, possibly, of investment going in. Also, the other ETF, which I'll talk about, but not as much. Um, I think the, you go back to this chart for a minute and I'll bring this up and think or swim, but I mean, look at this thing. It's, isn't this a lot different than you go back to IBB, right? IBB is, is a mess. <laughs> this group seems, and again, I'm not an expert in this area. If anybody else is and wants to talk about it, um, certainly, but look at the trend that's going on in this thing. It's, it's pretty Pretty, pretty nice. So I did go long this thing today. I kind of waited for the first red day. 
and I'll look to kind of add to it if it comes back into the 50 day moving average. Um, the other one is IHI. This is medical devices. I've known about this ETF for a while. Um, you could see it's also in a much better trend than XLV or, or, the, or the two biotech ETFs. Pretty, pretty nice. <laughs> Uh, but you can see this is also, it's not as straightforward, I think, as, as the XHE ETF in terms of accumulation. But you could definitely see that it's different than, than XLV and it's different than IBB. There's definitely more accumu accumulation going on versus distribution. So what I like to do at, at this point, we'll go back to this XHE. You know, now that we've kind of seen what's going on here and that there's some accumulation going on. By the way, this that represents about fifty million dollars. Again, these are small cap names. So it's they're not they're not large names. And once we start digging into the individual names, you'll kind of see what I mean. All right, so let's um let me show you the components and we'll start to go through them. Um so the I want to keep this up, but bring it over here. Uh, we'll come back to that because I've got fun flow data on here. Um, so let's talk about what this thing is, and then we'll go through some some individual names. I keep putting up, bringing up the wrong symbol, but this one this is at X H E. I keep wanting to say X P E, but it's X H E. So healthcare equipment. Um, there's not much really in the description. Uh, I want to get into the individual names. Uh, because basically I want to learn if these names are showing really good strength. The, the object here is to find some new names. It uh, looks like Marriott is out. It's down a little bit um, for earnings. But I, I want to learn new names, especially once we, once we see option activity as well. I want to be somewhat familiar with these names uh, because right now I'm not. You know, I've, I've heard of a couple of these names. You know, I've detailed this one before, and I'm starting to get familiar with this one. But let's let's start with the first one. So you can see, by the way, I think this is. Let me just go back to the description. I think this is a market cap weighted. It may not actually. It might be equally weighted. Uh, might say here. What is the symbol? S P S. I H E. <coughs> so this is the index. By the way, every ETF tracks an index. So there's always a benchmark index. This is the benchmark index. Uh, this index is designed to measure the performance of the of the narrow global industry, uh, the GICs, most detail. So I know that. Uh, but it is a subgroup. It does not say, which is really unusual, whether it's market cap or e equally weighted. But we go back to the ETF and the components and it does look like it's equally weighted because no name is over two percent so it's it's a it's a large number of names in here so we don't know we're not going to go through all these but we'll go through usually what happens from the last rebalance the names that have the highest weights have performed the best if you haven't if uh for especially for an equally weighted etf right because what happens is they they restrike the etf and the index once a quarter December, uh, March, June. So the last time that this was rebalanced was March. And since then, what will happen is the names that get the, have the bigger weight, they, they're, they have a bigger weight because they, they've rallied. All right, so we'll go through. So the, the names that are um, the biggest weight have, have done that. They've rallied. So let's start going through a couple of these names. So I'm going to switch, move this over here. Maybe I'll move it over here. And I'll bring up a new screen. So DXCM. So this, this is the top weight. This name just reported earnings. Uh, this is a medical. So I, most of these companies, what you're going to find, you know, the, the first one that we brought up was QDEL because they just reported earnings. Uh, but it's either going to say life science company, medical equipment, uh, those are the classif classifications of this name, but um, uh, Dexcom operates as a medical device company focused on the design, development, continuous glucose monitoring systems for people with diabetes. 
All right, so that's that's what they do. Um, again, they just had earnings. We'll look at the chart and think or swim. I mean, really, I mean, they've they've had a really big now. You know, they were higher, but these names just had good earnings. So, and a lot of a couple of these names that I've looked at have had a big run up and are starting to digest. Like another name, so I'll kind of go off, go out of the order a little bit. But one name that we saw unusual or, or aggressive option activity about a, probably about a month and a half ago, and those calls have since expired. But this is a name that I wanted to play, uh, but I, I knew it had earnings. So I just didn't want to get um, put on a, a big trade, especially with a high price stock. But another name that's had a big run up, you know, it's done a uh, digestion here, has had a big run up. Uh, digestion now for the better part of almost a year and now it looks like it's kind of ready to go and they had good they had nice earnings so this is this one that I have up is Massey Massimo I, I like the name of this company so we've gone over this one before when the first time that we this also you know kind of piqued my interest when we um, saw option activity in this name. And, I, and then I started to look at the metal, medical device group too, to see how it was performing. But um, they develop, design, develop, license medical signal processing and sensor technology for the non-invasive monitoring of psych psychological parameters. And, you know, and it does seem like a lot of these medical device companies, like my, my younger brother, he works for Edward Life Sciences. If anybody knows that company, that's another medical device company where I guess it's what the, and again, I'm not an expert in this stuff, but it's non-invasive. Uh, so they could have heart surgery uh, w without like basically going in and having open heart surgery. So I think that's what's intriguing about a lot of these companies is they're doing, they either have different methods. Uh, they're working on uh, different procedures, I, I guess. Um, so perhaps that's why they're, they're doing so well, but that, that's what Massey does. And again, they just had earnings too, and they beat as well. Uh, they had 82, 82 cents versus 75. So it seems like as we start to go through some of these names, we'll go back to this. So we, we brought up DXCM. Um, INGN is another one. You know, we could kind of see how 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 much these things trade too. This, you know, they don't. They're not, like I said. They're these are not large cap companies. These are small cap companies. This one trades, you know, about five hundred thousand shares a day. Um, the next one is INGN, which we'll go over. I mean, you know, it doesn't. This thing doesn't trade a lot, right? So it's a hundred seventy-two dollar uh, stock trades 169,000 shares a day. That's it. And you look at the description of this one. Develops, manufactures healthcare products. Company offers oxygen sensator cart, carry bags, backpacks. So interesting stuff. Supply for uh, the obstructive pulmonary disease patients. Like really, <laughs> really complicated stuff, right? Um, but again, you look at this one, look at this chart. It's crushing. I mean, and again, this one had earnings and they popped. All right, so that, that's INGN. That's really a small cap name. Um, the next one you may have heard of, ABMD. I'm kind of familiar with this one. Another one that's just gone vertical. So, A, I'm not in any of these names, but it's kind of interesting. Now, I wish I would have fi found these a little bit earlier, but clearly something is going on in these names. They're all very strong. Uh, this one's at $347, ABMD. This is develops, manufactures, markets, cardiovascular products, technologies to, de, to design to assist and replace the pumping function of the heart. So again, very different kind of uh, companies. They're almost, um, 
like one product type companies or, you know, the, the company that my brother worked for, he doesn't work there anymore, but he, uh, Edwards Life Sciences, they had a couple different products, but they had that one major product is their, um, is their heart valve. And they've got a procedure where you don't have to have open heart surgery. So most of these companies, these small companies, uh, this one's a medical device maker, cardiac, cardiac assist devices, and is developing a self-contained artificial heart. So again, very different. These companies are making stuff. They're not, um, yeah, this is in the medical device. Let's see how many shares this thing trades a day. Uh, in the same ballpark, 360,000 shares a day. But again, look at the price of the stock, 347. Any questions so far? I mean, this is, I don't know if any of you guys know these companies, but it's, you know, again, I'm kind of saying the same thing, but it, I think it's it's pretty neat to find some of these names that have had this strength. And, and again, when we look at earnings, kind of these names have been flying under the radar for earnings um, because, you know, we watch some of the bigger names. Um, next one, I mean, this is another crusher. IART. Um, this one's not quite as high priced. It's still 65 bucks, but another one that is just absolutely on fire. It's overbought. Um, Integra Life Sciences Company, IART. So another one that just had earnings. Oops. Might as well look at the volume. Yeah, same thing. Trades about 500,000 shares a day. Again, I'm looking at the right of the screen. You can see the averages over here, uh, which is nice. Bloomberg does that. Um, this is another medical equipment company. So it does look like these are either, they say medical equipment, metal dev medical devices, life sciences companies. Integra Life Sciences Holdings develops, manufactures, markets, medical devices, implants, biomaterials, treatment of burns and skin defects, spinal and cranial disorders, orthopedics, and other surgical applications. PE of about 39 on this one. Just, I think this one just had earnings too. Oh, maybe not, but still is making this big move. All right, so that's another name in here. QDEL we already talked about. Um, Pen is another one. So, so the it's just you know so the the object of the, of the webinar is to kind of um, as we're going through some of these names, you know, just kind of take note of what these names are and and you know become a little bit familiar with them in case we de in case we do see a little bit of call activity we're familiar with these names and then we'll also talk uh you know i think a great way to kind of get involved in these names especially you know this one trades two hundred thousand shares a day so they're very very uh small cap they're they're pretty illiquid it looks like so in this case i think the the etf is a good way to play these names um pen Penumba designs, develops, manufactures, and markets medical devices. So again, another medical device company. The company offers peripheral, vascular, and neurovascular devices that helps patients suffering from stroke and other neurovascular diseases. Uh, it doesn't look like they're making much money with the, with that uh, PE, but you know, again, you look at the you look at the chart. And it's an, another beast. <laughs> So I think for these names, another thing is most of these names have kind of gotten away. You know, if, I think if they come back, maybe, you know, like any chart, right? I mean, you don't want to be buying exactly on the highs, uh, but maybe a, a move back into the 50-day moving average. But it's just shocking to me to look at how many of these names, um, N-E-O-G, uh, look at this one too. Fascinating. It's fascinating to me. Where have these, you know, again, they're, they're very small companies. I would say, where have these companies been? Where, why have I not been seeing all these companies? This is a healthcare supply company. 
um, develops markets, products, services that they get a dedicated to food and animal safety. The company's diagnostic products are used by food and animal producers to test foodborne bacteria. So again, something I'm not really familiar with. Yeah, I'm going to say no. I'm going to say if we see option activity in, in any of these names, um, I think you're going to have to stick to wherever they, you know, whatever strike and maturity that they buy because I would have a feeling that these are going to be ridiculously wide for, for options. But I bet a, a couple of them. I mean, I think I've seen call activity in a couple of these names. ABMD. I don't know if I'm going to get anything. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit like this. Small stuff, 150 contract stuff. Um, notice I really haven't been been see What about DXCM? You know, oh, this one actually has seen a little bit of call activity. Like this actually, this one right here, calls. I mean, that's another way that you could play this kind of stuff. Seventy May 75, 85 call spread. You know, maybe you look at doing some call spreads if you want to play this stuff in options. But I think most of which, I think really you know, owning some of these names either in cash or, or the ETF itself is probably your best bet. Um, like I said, Massey, we saw calls. Uh, that's what kind of was the other, uh, you know, kind of brought me, gave me another idea to kind of look at some of these names. Um, GCOS, let's just see what this company does. This actually, that actually looks like a, uh, a chart that's not that extended. Let's see what these guys do. Uh, so I want to keep that up. And let's go over to this one. First of all, let's see how many shares it trades a day. Again, you know, all under a million shares. This one, probably one of the most more liquid one, maybe just because it's a lower stock price. It's 35, 600,000. Let's see if we've seen any any option activity in GCOS. Uh, not much, not much. Which is fine. I mean, we talked about we. You know, I try to say this as many times as I can in the room. But look at all these companies. There's no option activity in these names. I mean, obviously this this chart is not as good as as some of those other ones. But there's no. There's no option activity in any of these names, and they go up fine. So you don't have to, um, you know, I know some of you want to play these names probably in options, but, you know, we don't necessarily have to, you don't necessarily have to see option activity for a name to go up. And I think that gets lost on the Twitter sphere. Um, people are always, especially when I get new members in the room, they're like, oh, well, what, you know, this thing's up 2%. Were there calls bought? <laughs> No, you don't need to have calls bought for it to go up 2%. I, I don't, I, again, I don't want to go off on a tangent about that, but um, I think like, I don't know where retail investors learn this stuff that you need to have option activity for the name to go. It helps. There's no doubt about it. It's one of the things I look for, you know, to, for it to catch momentum, but it's, it's not a cause and effect thing. You don't need to have it. So anyway, this this company looks pretty interesting, right above the 200-day moving average. Um, ICHR, let's see if that one's in here. We'll definitely look at that one. You know, I think it's part of what it is 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 it's a sales pitch. You know, when you go into a, a, a trading room and they say like, "This is the best thing ever," option activity. You know, it definitely, there's no doubt about it. It definitely helps, but it's not the end all be all. Uh, this one is, that one is not in it, but it's, let's, let's take a look at it. Uh, yeah, this one is underneath the 200 day moving average. I'll be honest, I don't like this chart because it's underneath the 200, my simple simple glance at the chart tells me I don't like it. <laughs> oh, it's a semi-cap equi equipment. 
Yeah, that's not going to fall in the medical device group. Let's see. Factory automation equipment. There's a critical fluid delivery system for semiconductors. So a little bit different of a company, so that's why it's not in there. You know it. Stay away. <laughs> Lamb is their biggest customer. Okay, good to know. Good information. Um, this one I've heard of o O S U R, like a so Abbott is also in here. You know I've gone to the kind of the second and third page, so it's kind of an interesting ETF because there's a lot of names in here. Um, Halyard Health, we probably have heard of this name before. That's um, it's been a controversial name. N V R O just reported earnings. I think they did bad. I think they had bad earnings. But another medical, yeah, this one fell apart on earnings. NVRO, chart, a very sideways looking chart. So again, not every name I think is going to be great in here, but you could see a pretty well diversified. We went over Massey before. What's MMSI? I've seen this name before too, but it doesn't mean I'm familiar with it. I mean, another one that's <laughs> absolutely on fire. Uh, Merit Medical System. Let's see what these guys do. Another medical device company, says it over here, manufactures markets products using diagnostic and interventional cardiology and radiology procedures. Big words, which at this time of day, I'm trying to get through them. Uh, the company's primary products include inflation, inflation devices, guide wires, thrombotic catheters, and fluid de defensive dispensing systems. All right. Let's see if these guys, um, yeah, another one that trades about 360,000 shares a day. So the conclusion that I'm kind of getting to, they report earnings in July. But another name that's absolutely on fire in Fuego. This one, I think, I, for some reason, I think we've seen option activity. Maybe it hasn't been recently. Yeah, not much. But I've seen something in that name before. Um, what's, let's just go through a couple of intuitive surgicals in here. You guys are familiar with that one. And then, you know, it does look like there's some bigger companies. Let's do one more. Or maybe two more NXTM. Let's move this over here. Let's see what NXTM is. This one not as uh, big of an uptrend, just above the 200-day moving average. NX. TM. Medical equipment uh, develops manufacturers and market stages for treatment of end stage renal disease and acute kidney failure. So, again, complicated stuff. I'll see what shares these guys trade. Um, a little bit more 800000 It is a $26 stock. And we'll do one more, and then unless you guys want to go keep going through this, AXGN. Again, I think it's good, uh, like I said in the beginning, to kind of, you know, get yourself a little bit familiar with some of these companies. So if we do see something, this is a healthcare supply company. Geez, look at the chart in this one. Regenerative, regenerative medicine company focused on the development and commercialization of tech for peripheral nerve construction and regeneration. Wow, interesting company. Axogen. AXGN. Oh, oh, why couldn't you guys tell me about this like six months ago? Look at this thing. Ten, $10 it was back here. It's at 44 Holy cow. Is it a fun finding names like this? I mean, I would have liked to follow, to be in them. Um, but this is, does anybody know most of these companies? Or is this all new to you guys too? H-A-E is another one. Holy cow. 
<laughs> You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> H-A-E. What? Alex, what is a name that I've never heard of before? And look at it. I can't even pronounce that name. Paymonetics. Uh, markets automated blood processing systems. The company products are for use in surgical blood salvage, blood component collections, and plasma collections. Pew. Uh, this one trades a little bit more. It, I mean, it actually trades a lot for you know an, an eighty dollar stock. Um, yeah, and it's actually since on this run, I mean, uh, this one I'm surprised I don't know considering how much volume it trades. That's that's a decent amount considering some of these names that we've gone through. H A E, what a monster! My goodness, um, and it looks like they just reported earnings. Uh, whoops. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, let's see what they did for earnings. Trader Planet Daily puts out a chart of the day. Lots of parabolics charts and unfamiliar names. Uh, they just reported 29 cents versus 43. Doesn't look like that's too good. Apparently, somebody liked it. To, they did beat on revenue. Oh, it looks like first quarter EPS adjusted in error. This was this morning, this name reported. Revenue beats the highest estimates. My goodness. Yeah, I've seen, I actually get those, Mark. I, I get them. You know, I actually don't look at them, but I get them and delete them. Because uh, it's tough. I mean, the nice thing about this is we're going through like a whole group of stocks, um, which I think is more beneficial than it's tough to constantly learn like some of the small cap names because, you know, again, we're not going to see option activity in them. Uh, they, tr they obviously trade less. You have to own them in stock. You can't own them really in options. But they're also like when they when they send out those those emails, I don't know if anybody else gets those those Trader Planet emails, but it's they're just like one-offs right so um i don't know they don't seem to really help me too much they maybe they're uh helpful to somebody else but then so if we keep going here we've got boston scientific so what i'll what i'll try to do guys is put together a little report um we're going through this pretty ad hoc and i just didn't have time to do it this week i wanted to you know sometimes you just don't have enough time uh, there's only so many hours of the day. P O D D. Let's look at let's look at one or two more, and then uh, we'll call it a night. But you know, then I want to get to basically how to participate in this stuff. What I think is a good way to part. So in um, this chart looks pretty good too. You could see it here. Insulate Corporation, medical device company that develops, markets, and manufactures insulin infusion systems. Okay, I've heard of this name before. P O D D. Um, again, another name that just doesn't trade a lot. Does anybody use, um, what's the name of the broker who, where you can set up an index and you can, um, I, I, uh, I forget the name of it. I've used it a couple times. You could actually set up your own basket or index and, um, And then you could just go out and if you want to just use like buy $10,000, as long as you weight it properly, they'll go out and buy you the whole thing, um, the, the, the whole index. For, yeah, I heard Fidelity does this now. I have to look into that because we talked about that with, um, with a couple of the ind indices that I set up. Uh, but this is another really nice chart. Um, P-O-D-D. -D. But again, very small. Let's see when. They must have just reported earnings with this move. 
let's see what we'll wait for yep they just report yeah all these companies are just reporting earnings uh i'll think of the company that does it the baskets um where you can trade baskets you have to set it up but um i have to look into that because i might be able to set them up for our room and you could just you know as long as i do that you could um two more we'll do do two more names we know this one idxx which has also been a beast C-U-T-R and Baby. Didn't we, weren't we making fun of that name before? <laughs> I probably, because I'm an idiot. Uh, look at this one, C-U-T-R, Kutera. But I think I was making fun of that name, Baby. Uh, C-U-T-R, let's see how many shares they trade. Another one that trades about 190,000 shares a day. Um, traded a lot today. I must have, again another name that must have reported earnings. Uh, C U T R, and then I want to see the description. Develops manufactures manufactures aesthetic laser systems. The company markets products for removal of unwanted hair and treatment of vascular lesions. So dermatology, plastic surgeons. And another name that just dumbfounds me to look at the price from another name from the lower teens up to 54 bucks in a, Feb, in a year, in a, in a damn year. <laughs> um, this other one, so let's look at this, this company. This is, um, nope, not, not Baba. That's just by muscle memory. Uh, this one doesn't seem like it's, I don't like the chart. That's baby, Natus Medical. So if we, you know, there's more, names that we're more familiar, Stryker, Medtronic, Baxter. I think, by the way, the Baxter chart doesn't look bad. I was looking at this the other day, unless it's changed. It's, this one's not, you know, even some of the bigger names. What's Stryker, S-Y-K, is it? Some of the bigger, it seems like the bigger names, I mean, this has done fine, you know, it's consolidating uh, Striker, but it seems like some of the bigger companies, you know, the value is in the um, in the really small cap names. Um, I mentioned Edward Life Sciences has actually come back nicely since earnings. It's probably a good place to buy it here. They always seem to overreact, the analyst on the, um, on the call. Um, BDX is another name you may be familiar with. Uh, that's actually come in pretty decently. Uh, looks like they already reported. All right, so what to do with these names? Yeah, Edwards is in here. Align is in here. So you kind of get to the second tier names that are, again, the reason why they're not the top weights is because I believe this is an equally weighted ETF. And what'll happen is the names that perform best, it's not like, it's not market cap. Does everybody know what that means? A market cap weighted ETF, you've got your biggest companies that get the biggest weighting. So, you know, and the XLK, for example, the technology ETF, Apple, Microsoft, Google, those are gonna be your biggest names in, in the index because it's a market cap weighted index, meaning the largest market cap companies get the biggest weights, right? They, they didn't get there because of the performance. I mean, I guess they did over time, but they're the biggest weights. Same thing in SPY, which is a modified market cap weighted ETF, but they get to the biggest weights because they're the biggest companies. Um, when you equally weight an ETF, everything gets exactly the same weight. And then what happens from the last rebalancing cycle is the one variable is price. So as names go up, they naturally have a bigger weight, right? Because that's the one thing. The shares, the position stays the same into the next rebalancing. So, you know, clearly these small cap names have, had, have been on a terrific run, some of the ones that we went through. But you could see there's a lot of other names in here that now we're getting to names that we're familiar with. Zimmer. HOLX, Abbott is in here. 
So it's not all small cap. It just seems like the small cap names are really outperforming. All right, so what, what to do with some of these names that have really, you know, that have been the big performers? I think if you think about owning the ETF, um, I think the options are going to be really difficult. Um, you know, when we see options in some of these names, some of the bigger names, you know, you can kind of jump on these names. But IDXX is doing well. ISRG, which had good earnings, is now back to a 50, back to a 52-week high or close to it. Um, but I think, you know, what I did today is, is I bought the ETF. So just like anything else, you kind of have to just be a little bit mindful of when this thing's overbought. Now, I know we're seeing the volume here. So for me, you know, I started a position today and I'll add more. Like if we get into the 20 day moving average is probably where I'll add. I don't know if we're going to get down, but you know, these things, if you're patient, uh, you'll be able to get in. So yeah, I did, you know, I didn't want to buy, I was watching it since I talked about, since I, since I found this last week, but I just didn't want to buy it on a 52 week high. So it came in a little bit today. We'll see if it comes in a little bit more. So I think really, you know, um, I think A, it's good to become familiar with the, with some of those names. And I think B, um, you know, we could start to watch our option activity. I just don't know if we're going to see a lot of option activity in some of those names that only trade a couple hundred thousand shares a day. Uh, the other way to play this is through the ETF. And I did not go over the IHI, but I think the IHI is, it has more larger cap ET, uh, companies. And this one is probably market cap weighted. Let's see if it says it. Uh, holds healthcare stocks of various cap sizes. Uh, the ETF weights the components by market cap. All right, so you're going to see the the larger names in this one. You know, Medtronic, Abbott, Thermo, Thermo Fisher, DHR. Kramer likes this company a lot, uh, DHR. He said it's one of his favorite companies, I believe. I'm thinking of the right company. It hasn't been doing much, Danaher. But um, you can see that's, that's the difference between I, intuitive surgicals in here as well. But you got the bigger names that you're probably more familiar with. So again, difference between a market cap weighted and an equally weighted uh, ETF. Um, and I think that's why it's also been outperforming is because those small cap names have really been, um, been the outperformers in the group. All right, so, you know, I think we just identified like a whole pocket of market strength. To me, again, it just shines a light on the whole group and and finds where there's really strength. And, and I don't really know why um, we could come, I can come up with my own theories why all these names are breaking out like this. Um, maybe that's just where the the future is going in, in this industry. Also, these are the companies that are actually developing it where, you know, some of the big pharma and biotech companies are, you know, having difficulty rolling out new drugs. It sounds like a lot of these companies are rolling out procedures um, versus, you know, a new cancer drug, right? It doesn't sound like any of these companies do that type of thing. So different, right? Anybody have any questions? So I hope you I, I hope you got something out of it. Um, like I said, it was, we're up about you know we are under an, an hour, um, but I hope we learned something. I uh, I learned stuff you know th th some of these names and yeah I mean I think for for right now it's 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 uh, the best way for me to play it is is through the ETF. You're welcome, and of course some of these individual names. If some of you own, you know are are you know, managing a cash portfolio like I am. Mine is you know, obviously uh, trend portfolio, and I'll stay long until as long as the trend is intact. Um, but I know some of you invest not only in options but in stock too. So these are, I, th I think, are also some long-term, uh, some long-term plays. And I think most of those names that have run up a little bit, just like going over any chart, I think you got to wait for some of these to kind of cool off a little bit.
Um, I will be watching that QDEL tomorrow because they did have good earnings and the name name probably just doesn't trade after hours. All right, any any questions? Um, what I will do over the next week is, wow, they're talking about Bitcoin again on Fast Money. Really beating a dead horse. Talk about beating a dead horse. Fast Money, almost every night they're talking about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Anyway, that's a whole other subject. Um, I will be, you know, I'll put in a report of some of the names that we went over, you know, maybe 10 names or eight to 10 names. You know, I'll put those descriptions. So if you forget, um, number one, you'll have the recording. You can go back, but I'll try to put out a report of just, you know, where the strength is in some of these names uh, so we can kind of uh, keep an eye on them. All right, guys, have a great night. And uh, thanks for joining me for tonight's webinar. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Great day in the trading room today. Awesome job, everybody.